you'll find an authorized version of the Holy Scriptures before you in the pew. If you'd pick it up and uh, turn with me uh, to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms, and we're turning uh, to the Psalm 126. The 126th Psalm. When the Lord turned again the cat of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and we both, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And God will bless his word to our hearts for Jesus' sake. And we do thank this congregation over the past years for their loyalty, for their prayers, for their encouragement, and for their de the defense that they have taken with us in our stand for truth and righteousness. And I might just emphasize the battle is really only commencing. And we have got to pray that God will overrule and guide us and that we will be able to negotiate a settlement which will be honoring uh, to righteousness and truth, and which will bring us to the start of a long road, but a road that would lead us back to peace and back to prosperity and back to a country that will honor God in all their ways, and then God will direct their paths. I take the promised Holy Ghost, the blessed power of Pentecost, to fill me to the uttermost. I take, thank God, he undertakes for me. And the people of God said, Amen. Turn with me in your Bible to the psalm that we read in our Bible lesson. The Psalm 126. I never open the Bible at the psalms that I'm not amazed at the wonder of them all. You should remember that the Sam book is a replica of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It is a five-volumed book, and you will find the end of each part of it has either a hallelujah or an amen. We have that wonderfully long psalm, Psalm 119. And immediately after that psalm, we have 15 psalms. They're called the psalms of the degrees, or the goings. They were psalms that were sung by the Levitical priests 
as they climbed to the top of the mountain on which the temple of God was built. And as they went up the mountain to make their sacrifices and to sing the praises of God, at each step of fifteen steps they sung a psalm. And we're looking at the seventh psalm that they sung in this Psalm 126. This psalm is a psalm about a miracle. A miracle of the intervention of God at a time when you would have said all is lost. There's nothing but darkness ahead uh, for the Jewish people and annihilation. And yet something happened. The Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. And we were like them that dreamed. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. And our tongue was singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. It was Martin Luther who said, I always abide in the simple and plain sense as much as I can when I read my Bible and especially these psalms which are called the psalms of degrees. Because the Levites or priests were wont to sing them upon the stairs or some high place. Even as with us, he that beginneth the psalms or preaches standeth in a place above the rest, that he may be the better seen and heard. For it seemed not that these psalms were sung by the multitude who had gathered, or who were at that time in the temple, but they were sung by the special choir of priests who as they advance to the holy place to do their work of sacrifice every step was a song and every step taken was a louder and stronger and greater song and so Luther says let us just listen to what they sang. And you will note in this psalm, they are singing about a great victory that only God could have worked and only God could have wrought. They were in captivity. They were in chains. They were in slavery. The night was dark and it was getting darker. Their families were attacked and slaughtered before their faces. Rivers of blood flowed in the city of Jerusalem. And it seemed as if the great history of the Jewish nation was coming to an awful and bloody end. But not so. Something happened. The captivity wrought by the power of the devil was smashed by the power of God. And those who had been lamenting and weeping and wailing and gnashing their teeth in despair 
They are now filled with laughter, and their tongues are filled with singing. I must confess to you this week that I felt very like that as I listened uh, to all the false prophets and their false prophecies coming to naught. Because only God can change situations beyond the power of man to alter. And what did these people do? Did they praise themselves? Did they give the honor to themselves? Did they give the honor uh, to their soldiers and their armies and those that fought the battles? No. They said the Lord had done great things for us. But before they said that, the heathen, the people that were ungodly, the people that had hated them, persecuted them, and put them to the sword, they had to admit, what does it say? They said among the heathen, the Lord had done great things for them. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. And then they go on and they describe what happened. And you'll notice their first word was a prayer. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the side. Fifteen is an interesting number because there was a king called Hezekiah. He was sentenced to die. And the prophet of God told him, the prophet of God told him he would die. He turned his face uh, to the wall. He sobbed, and his body shook, and he asked God to spare him. And God gave him 15 extra years in safety and in peace. And his reign before was outshined by 50 years that the Lord gave him. Some of the commentators feel that the author of these songs of degrees was none other than the king himself. And he was remembering what God did for him. And now the God that did it for him had, did, had done a wonderful work for the whole nation and all its people. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. You cannot uh, describe the change in the circumstances. Captivity and all its miseries had been endured, but suddenly there was a glorious and instantaneous release. It didn't come by the strength of the nation. It came by the intervention of Almighty God. It came with the speed of saving grace. For did not these people pray this prayer, Make haste to help us. Did God hear that prayer? He did. Did he make haste to help them? He did. And what happened? The overwhelming joy of liberation rang out a message from their tongues and from their hearts. We look back and we realize they thought it was a dream. Too good to be true. It happened so quietly. 
It happened so quickly. It happened so wonderfully. That is the way God works. One month can change tunes and words. The mouth filled with despair can now be filled with devotion. The tongue that has long repeated a catalogue of sorrows has now turned into many verses of song. The laughter is contagious. The rejoicing is irresistible. It is not the first time that God has turned the captivity of his people. The heathen are arrested. They are brought to a standstill. They are forced to listen and look and behold the intervention of God. They are compelled to confess the Lord have done great things for them. The past sadness had been swallowed up in extreme laughter. Instead of Jerusalem being a city of tears, it had become, by the intervention of Almighty God, a city of triumph. Mr. Spurgeon put it thus, their sorrow has gone like a dream, and the joy which followed was so great that it seemed too good to be true, and they feared it must be a vision of our idle brains. So sudden, so overwhelming was their joy that they felt like men out of themselves ecstatic and in a trance. The captivity had been great, but its deliverance was greater still. For God himself had wrought that deliverance. It was too good to be true. Each man said to himself, Am I dreaming? Or if it be a dream, let me dream on. Do not wake me yet. This was not the experience of one individual. It was the experience of the whole nation. What God did for Israel, he can do in our time and generation. There are those who think that God is dead. There are those who think the Bible is a fable. There are those who think that fundamentalists preach a fake religion. They do nothing of the kind. The religion of the Bible is a religion of truth and righteousness. And the same God that delivered his people in the dark days in Jerusalem can deliver his people today. His touch has lost none of its power. What a great thing to be able to say, the Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Notice the work of peace. God is a giver of peace. God is the author of peace. Only God can take away the war and bring real peace. And here we find that this peace was eternally planned by God. God planned. God promised. God said he would give peace. And he would give deliverance. Your prayers are not in being Israel of God. God still hears and answers prayer. And it's time we as a people got our feet upon the solid promises of the fact that God hears and God answers prayer. But this work was not only eternally planned, it was effectually perfect. Having planned it, God carried it into effect.
God's promise is he will perfect that which concerns his people. The flag of God's dominion flies everywhere. He is king of kings and lord of lords. And he will effectually perfect what he puts his hand to. But notice thirdly, this work is everlastingly paraded. God parades his mercy. He parades his love. He parades his power. He parades his wisdom. He parades his truth. He parades his glory. And he does that constantly and with great certainty. Hell has to acknowledge God's dominion. Saved sinners rejoice in God's grace. Saints repose in God's love. Angels revel in God's benefits. Everything that God does will be held in everlasting remembrance. It cannot be and never will be forgotten. It is indeed the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. The great things of God are done for the people of God. Nothing can stop the effectual perfecting of what God has set his hand to do. He who is the everlasting God, the Lord, never slumbers or sleeps. And he will complete Perfectly all he has put his almighty hand to. Fourthly, this work of God is efficiently processed. God processes efficiently the objective of his wisdom. He in his eternal almightiness will achieve everything to which he has put his mind. None can stay God's hand or say to him, What doest thou? They in the quietness of their end bear eloquent testimony to the majesty and sovereignty of the Most High God. He eternally plans it. He effectually perfects it. He efficiently processes it. And he everlastingly parades it. For all eternity, we will revel in the everlasting glory of the unfading glory in Emmanuel's land. Such is the doing of our faithful God for and on behalf of the elect of God. If you look at this, Sam, you will notice the word glad. Where off we are glad. There is an unfathomed depth in the gladness of God's people. The water of God's joy is in us a well of water. The Lord Jesus Christ says it's springing up into everlasting life. Oh, the height and depth of mercy. Oh, the length and breadth of love. Oh, the fullness of salvation. Pledge of endless life above. The gladness of God. The God who shares with his people his almightiness. The God who is called in the New Testament the happy God. That happiness is imparted to his believing people. The gospel is the good news of the happy God. God makes his people glad as he preserves them in their going out and coming in continually. There is never anything lacking in God. New every morning are the delights of God. 
But could you look at that psalm again? And you will discover the overwhelming joy of the victor's deliverance. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Laughter and song. What did you get? Before it was sorrow and sighing. But now it is laughter and song. How our almighty God changes all things. God's when becomes our then. When God intervenes. When God fills us with grace, we are immediately filled with gratitude. There are strange supporters here to what the saints of God are saying. Those who were in heathen darkness, those who had hated the people of God, had persecuted the people of God, had called this, made the streets of Jerusalem rivers of blood. But they have to stand in silence and acknowledge the Lord have done great things for them whereof they are glad. There is even among ungodly people a strange reverence when God does his work. The recipients of God's grace are the loudest in God's praises and explosive in divine and overwhelming thanksgiving. For they say it is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. None are so joyful than those who are enjoying God's great deliverance. What God has done is in the deepest harmony with prayer turn us again. God alone must have all the glory and the praise, and the honor. But if you look again at this psalm, you'll find there a strange simile of description, a streams in the south. What does that mean? Oh, the enemies of Israel came from the south, from Babylon. They came with their great armies. They came to subdue the city. They came to cut down its walls and set its temple to the fire. But suddenly, something has happened. Jerusalem is now jammed with worshippers and not the armies of Babylon. For the great Babylon has fallen and God has caused a visitation and a liberation and a transfiguration among his people. Who are these people that walk in the streets of Jerusalem? None other than those who were slaves in Babylon. But the captivity is over. The chains are broken. The prison doors are torn down. And I hear the tramp, tramp, tramp of thousands and ten thousands of liberated saints of God marching to Zion, the beautiful city of God. But there's something more here. These people are not content with a celebration. They are looking forward to a marvelous multiplication. They that sow in tears shall reap Enjoy. Present distresses cannot last forever. We may have sorrow in our sowing, but we will not have sorrow in our reaping. After the bitterness of the tears comes the reaping of joy. Every morning is a reaping morning, for joy cometh in the morning. We may sow in the weeping of the storm. We shall take part in the reaping of seed time. Note, this is the water of our own tears. Only as we are broken and of a passion for lost souls can we expect without fail 
the reaping of the harvest of joyful gathering. The climax is bringing in the sheaves. Note the sudden change in the grammar of this psalm. From the plural they to the singular he. The single bringer in of sheaves goeth forth. Forth into a world of sin. But that world will be transformed by his sowing. He doesn't go forth in happiness. He goes forth weeping. Before you can be a winner of souls, you have to be a weeper for souls. There can be no birth without travail. There can be no plenty without pain. When the heart of the preacher is broken, the hearts of his hearer will break. Tears of sorrow for sinners will produce tears of sorrow for sin shed by stricken sinners. The seed he bears is precious. What is it? The precious word of God. The triumph of faith can it feel shall doubtless come again. The return of the happy soul winner is something that can't be overthrown. It will be a rejoicing coming. The advent of the soul winner is always a time of rejoicing. He went out with seed, but he returns with sheaves. Again, an overwhelming army of evil men and amidst that army, the soul winner goes forward, and he drops his seed into the ground, and he drops a tear on every seed he sows. Each grain he drops from his hand, he prays it will go into the hand of God, which will see it falls on good ground, and brings forth much fruit. Then a voice of song is heard. The sower is coming home, not with a bucket of seed, but with load after load of sheaves. There is no doubt about it. Filled with laughter stood we gazing. Loud our tongues in rapture sang. Quickly with the news amazing. All the startled nations rang, nation rang. See Jehovah's works of glory. Mark what love for them he had. Yes, for us, go tell the story. This was done, and we are glad. Lord, thy work of grace completing. All our exiled hosts restored. As in thirsty channels meeting, southern streams refreshing pour. They that now in sorrow weeping, tears and seeds come mingled so. Soon the fruitful harvest reaping shall with one joyful blossoms glow. Though the sower's heart is breaking, bearing forth the seed to shed. He shall come, the echoes wake, laden with his sheaves instead. He that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless, 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 come with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing. Bringing in the sheaves. Let us bow our heads in prayer. O oh God, our Father, we thank thee this night for thy pure and holy word. And we thank thee for its great encouragement in a day of darkness. In a day when the enemy comes in like a flood, 
In a day when captivity is hard to bear, when evil men rise up to detest and attack the people of God, yet we know that thou art working out thine own will, and soon we will change our sorrow to song, and soon we shall change our tears to triumph. Give us the grace and the patience and the determination to fight the good fight of faith and to lay hold of eternal life. As our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, could I ask you a question? Are you one of the sheaves being drawn home to the great harvest of the church? Or are you still in the mountains, wild and bare, away from the blessed sower's care? Oh, tonight, turn your eyes from the world, from the flesh and from the devil. Turn your eyes to Jesus, who died for you to set you free. And call upon him tonight to save you. And forgive you. And this night convert you to himself. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. O oh, spread thy covering wings around. Till all our wanderings cease. And at our Father's blessed abode. We'll all arrive in peace. And the people of God said, Amen and Amen.